the rational zero theorem. Our objective for this video, we want to use the rational zero theorem to find possible rational zeros. Let's remind ourselves that rational numbers are any numbers that can be written as a fraction. Okay, what do we know that we're gonna need for this lesson? We need to know what a polynomial function is in particular. We want to notice the leading coefficient, because we're going to use the leading coefficient, and we want to notice the constant term, okay? And we know that a polynomial which is, has, the, has the powers going from greatest to least is written in standard form. And we also know that the degree of the polynomial is equal to the number of zeros. We've been focused more on calling them zeros, but they're also called solutions or roots. Okay, the rational number theorem. When finding zeros of polynomial, polynomial functions, these zeros can be rational, can be real numbers, which means they're rational or irrational. Okay, remind, remind, our, remind ourselves that real numbers appear on the number line. Or the zeros can be imaginary. They don't appear on the x-axis. Okay, I restate that here. As we know, real number solution, solutions excuse me, show up on the graph as x-intercepts Imaginary solutions do not show up as x-intercepts, okay? So let's take a look at how this might work. A sixth degree polynomial has been factored as follows. Let's remind ourselves that a sixth degree polynomial has six solutions if multiple solutions are counted separately. Multiple is six zeros. Well, in this case, all the zeros are different. This zero is negative three. This zero is positive one half. This zero is negative root two. This zero is positive root two. This zero is an imaginary four minus five i. And this zero is the imaginary zero four plus five i. Okay, we have six zeros, and they can be a combination of real and imaginary, or non-real. In this case, I have all kinds of zeros in here. Okay, these two are rational. They can be written as fractions. These two are irrational. They cannot be written as fractions. And these two are imaginary, okay? This, this group are, are real zeros, which means they are on the number line. They are on the x-axis, and we'll call these our non-real, although I prefer to use imaginary, but we'll call those our non-real zeros. They are not on the x-axis. Okay, so what is the rational zero theorem? Okay, it's a tool. It can be used to make a list of all possible rational zeros of a polynomial as long as a polynomial has coefficients that are all integers. It's kind of specific. So it, it doesn't help you with these. It doesn't help you with these. It only helps you with the ones that are rational, and it requires that your polynomial functions have integer coefficients. Okay, not every number in the list will be a zero, but every rational number, every rational zero will be in the list. And finally, let's recognize that some polynomial functions have no real solutions, so no rational solutions, because they're, not re they're, they're, all, they're real their only solutions are imaginary. This is kind of specific, it's kind of particular. Okay, what does the zero, what does the rational number theorem tell us? Okay, how does it work? If a polynomial function has, whoops, I seem to have, there we go, integer coefficients, 
all possible rational zeros must be of the form p over q in simplest form, where p is a factor of the constant term, which is a sub zero, and q is a factor of the leading coefficient, which is a sub n. So your possible rational zeros are your factors of the constant term over the factors of the leading coefficient. Okay, let's take a look. So, this is my constant term. Its factors are plus or minus one and plus or minus three. Th negative three can, can only be factored as one times three. Obviously positive one times negative three, negative one times positive three. This is my leading, my leading coefficient. Okay, this is it's four. Its factors are positive and negative one, positive and negative two, and positive and negative four. For example, negative one times negative four is positive four, positive one times positive four is positive four. Okay, so what are my possible rational zeros? Possible rational I got the I, zeros. Okay, they're equal to the factors of the constant term, positive negative one, positive negative three, divided by the factors of the leading coefficient, positive or negative one, positive or negative two, positive or negative four, okay? Now let's do, let's do all this. I'll start with the one and I'll put it over those three. So this is equal to positive or negative one over positive or negative one. This numerator over this denominator. Positive, whoops, or negative one over positive or negative two. This numerator over this denominator. Positive or negative one over positive or negative four, this numeral over this denominator. Now I've, I've exhausted the one, now let's spread the three out. Positive or negative three over positive or negative one, positive or negative three over positive or negative two, and positive or negative three over positive or negative four. Okay, let me come up a little bit here so we can make sure I don't lose you. Okay, let's simplify all this. Well, this is simply plus or minus one. This is plus or minus one half. This is plus or minus one quarter. This is plus or minus three. This is plus or minus three halves. And this is plus or minus three quarters. Okay, so two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. I have a total of. 12 possible rational zeros. Okay, now, this is a fifth degree polynomial, so they're not all zeros because I only have five zeros. <laughs> I have five zeros. Um, but if I have any rational zeros, it will be in this list. Okay, if I have any rational zeros, it will be here. Let's take a look at our graph and see if I have any rational zeros and which one I have. So I'll turn this on. I'll go to my y equals and I'll put in my function, which is 4x to the fifth plus 12x to the fourth minus x minus 3. And I'll, I'll make sure I'm in the standard window. Okay. Looks like I have three. Looks like I have three rational zeros here. I have three zeros. I have, excuse me, I have three, three real number zeros. So I, I guess I have two, num two zeros that are imaginary, but I have three real number zeros. Um, let's see if which of these is on the list. I'm going to check the one on the left first. So second calc, a zero. 
and I'm gonna go over to the left side of that zero, which is below the x-axis. Give me, let me get over there a second. Here I come back down, maybe. Okay, I lost myself. Let's see where I got to. One, two. Somehow, I am not seeing, I'm not seeing what's, I'm not able to see my cursor. I don't know why, I guess I'm skipping ahead too much. Well, left bound is there, and there's that left bound. Right bound is over there. Okay, I found the bounds, and they're in between those two lines, and I'll take a guess. And negative three is a zero right there. So, negative three. Ding, 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 I have a winner. Negative three. Let's see if these two are rational. Uh, let's so second calc, a zero. Okay, I gotta get over. Okay, that's good. And then get beneath it, and that's good. And okay, nope. Uh, negative 0 0.70701, that's too many digits. It's, it's obviously rounding something, so that is not a rational zero there. And let's go to the other side. And let's see here, is this one, uh, let's see, this one is positive 0 0.70710, nope, that's also been rounded. So it turns out I only have one rational zero. Okay, it's negative three. So the actual rational zero is negative three. So as it turned out, I had 12 possibilities, but the only one that actually was a rational zero was negative three. But it's on the list. If it's a rational zero, it will be in this list. Let's take a look at a second example. Okay, use list all possible rational zeros of this fourth degree polynomial, negative x to the fourth plus three x squared minus four, and then we're gonna graph it to see which are rational zeros. Okay, well here is my constant term. Its factors are plus or minus one, plus or minus two, and plus or minus four. Here is my leading coefficient. It's a negative one, its factors are simply plus or minus one. Okay, so possible, rational zeros are going to be, well, my numerator is the factors of the constant term. So plus or minus one, plus or minus two, plus or minus four, my denominator Denominator is factors of the leading coefficient. That's simply plus or minus one. And again, I'm simply gonna just spread this out. So plus or minus one over plus or minus one. So this one goes to that one, I'm done. Let's go to the two. Plus or minus two over plus or minus one, plus or minus four over plus or minus one. So I can simplify this, I have six. If I have a rational zero, it is one of these six, positive or negative one, positive or negative two, positive or negative four. So total of six possible rational zeros. Okay, let's see if any of these, it may have none of them. If there's a rational one, it's one of those six. Okay, let's take a look at this graph. And I'll go back to my y equals and I'll put in this function, which is negative x to the fourth plus three x squared minus four. Uh, I think I'm in the standard, but I'll check and here it is. And guess what? <laughs> I don't have any, I don't have any real zeros at all. This graph is entirely uh, beneath the x-axis, so I have no real zeros. It's a fourth degree polynomial, which means that all four of my solutions are imaginary. Kind of unique, but I have no real, which means I have no rational. So these are the ones that I could have had, but it turns out I have no rational zeros. So actual 
rational zeros, none, none of those at all. So there you have it. It's simply the, uh, it's the, uh, the factors of the constant term divided by the factors of the leading coefficient.